In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at assessment style questions for 2391 and similar qualifications. Assessments can take many forms. They can be short, multi choice answers, a longer, more detailed answer, or a mixture of both. And the question will always tell you what type of answer is expected. Questions are designed to probe your understanding of electrical circuits and your ability to find the relevant information in the books and to calculate the answers. In this video from Learn the Electrics, we will follow the style of one typical assessment. You are presented with part of a schedule of test results and the eight questions that follow are all based around this. Sufficient information to answer the question is provided in the chart and in the questions. This is open book and you may use the wiring regulations, the on-site guide and guidance note 3. You will also require a calculator, pencil and paper. You are asked to consider the four circuits shown in this table, part of a schedule of test results, and to then answer a variety of questions about the installation. We have a domestic installation and the earthing system is TNCS and it is supplied from a public low voltage supply, in other words, the national grid. You are given that ZE is 0 0.2 ohms and all protective devices are BSEN 60898 circuit breakers. All the circuits are wired in twin and earth cable using reference method C or clipped direct. And the ambient temperature is 20 degrees centigrade with no correction needed for the assessment. Also assume that the appropriate RCD protection is in place. Reference material that you may use will be the BS7671 wiring regulations, 18th edition, the on-site guide or OSG to 18th edition, and GN3, guidance note 3 to 18th edition. Pause the video at the start of each question and attempt to answer the question. When you have your answer, move on and they will then follow a breakdown of the question and the method used to find the correct answer. And the correct answer will of course be given. Please attempt the questions. It will build your skills and confidence for the assessment proper. Let's begin with question 1. Calculate R1 plus R2 for circuit number 2 and choose the most appropriate answer from the four choices. The test results table is shown along with the question. Pause the video while you calculate your answer and make your choice before moving on. Begin with the table showing the test results. Circuit 2 is a radial circuit wired in 4mm twin and earth with a 2.5mm CPC or earth. The circuit length is 25 meters. Now we need to consult table B1 in guidance note 3. We observe that 4mm 2.5mm cable has a resistance of 12.02 milliohms per meter. Multiply this by the circuit length of 25 meters and we have 300 milliohms. To convert milliohms into ohms, divide by 1000. 300 divided by 1000 gives us 0 0.3 ohms. And that is the answer, 0 0.3 ohms. Now on to question two. This time, we must calculate R1 plus R2 for circuit number 1 and choose the most appropriate answer. Again, pause the video while you calculate your answer and then make your choice. We are interested in the data for circuit number 1 as highlighted here. Notice that this is a ring circuit, very important when calculating R1 plus R2. 2.5, 1.5 twin and earth has a resistance of 19.51 milliohms per meter. Multiply this by the circuit length of 40 meters and we have 780 milliohms. Now divide by 1000 to arrive at 0 0.78 ohms. This is not the answer. To find R1 plus R2 for a ring circuit, we must divide this number by 4. 0 0.78 divided by 4 is 0 0.195 ohms, which can be rounded to 0 0.19 ohms. Don't worry too much about small inaccuracies in rounding. The correct answer will still be fairly obvious. 
Question 3 is next. Now we must calculate the actual voltage drop for circuit number 3 and choose the most appropriate answer. We are told that IB, the design current, is 13 amps and we should use this in the calculation. Again, pause the video and work out the answer. The yellow box on the right has all the information that we know or have been given. On page 383 of the wiring regulations we find that the maximum permitted voltage drop is 5% of 230 volts for a non-lighting circuit and this is 11.5 volts. You should be familiar with the formula shown. This is the standard formula for calculating voltage drop. The MVAM number is found on page 409 of the regulations in the rightmost column. For 2.5mm line and neutral, this is the number 18. IB has been given as 13 amps and the length is 60 metres. Because the MVAM number, millivolts per amp per metre, is in millivolts, we must divide by 1000 to find the actual volts. When we complete the calculation, as shown, we have 14.04 volts. Clearly, this exceeds the maximum permitted voltage drop of 11.5 volts. And our answer should be choice C. 14.04 volts and outside the permitted range. Question 4 follows now. You have just measured ZE for this installation at 0 0.2 ohms. Now calculate the prospective fault current or PFC. Again pause the video. This is a very straightforward Ohm's law calculation. PFC is a current. The Ohm's law triangle shows us that voltage divided by resistance will give us the current. 230 volts nominal voltage divided by 0 0.2 ohms is 1150 amps or 1.15 kiloamps. So the answer is D. Now is the turn of question number 5. We are asked to calculate the effective insulation resistance for the whole installation. Pause the video. This is another essential calculation. To calculate the effective insulation resistance of the whole installation, we should use the reciprocal method of calculating parallel resistances. It's very easy, but you must be methodical and do write things down as you calculate them. The formula tells us that the total resistance, or RT, can be found by dividing the number 1 by each circuit's insulation resistance value and then dividing the number 1 by that answer. We will show you. Replace R1 by circuit 1's resistance, which is 200. Then replace R2 by circuit 2's, which is 188 and so on. Calculate each value and you will end up with several decimal numbers as shown. Add these numbers together and in our case we have 0 0.46985 or very similar depending on how you round up or round down. This is not the answer yet. We need to turn 1 over RT upside down to arrive at RT on its own. To do this we must put the 1 over the top of 0 0.46985. And now on the calculator divide 1 by 0 0.46985 and we have the answer 2.128 mega ohms. So our answer is A. But why do we want to know this? The regulations tell us that the overall effective insulation resistance of the whole installation must not be less than 2 mega ohms. On to question 6. Circuit number 4 is to be extended by 20 meters to accommodate some extra lighting. What will be the new measured ZS value and will it be acceptable? We can calculate this and it is always a good idea to know the new value before extending the circuit, just in case. Pause the video and complete the calculation. This equation at the top should be familiar to you. It is one of those equations that must be known. And ZE is given to us as 0 0.2 ohms. This is a radial circuit, so R1 plus R2 
is the same as little r1 and little r2, the resistance of the line and CPC conductors. The conductor resistance for 1.5 and 1 mm twin in earth is 30.2 milliohms per meter. The new circuit length is 80 plus 20, which is 100 meters. The calculation is 100 times 30.2 and then divided by 1000 to give an answer of 3.02 ohms. Add this 3.02 to ZE or 0 0.2 ohms and we have a new ZS of 3.22 ohms. On page 62 of the wiring regulations, we see that a 6 amp type B breaker has a maximum ZS tabulated value of 7.28 ohms. If we multiply this by 0 0.8 to allow for temperature changes in the property, we have what is called the measured ZS or ZSM. This is the number that we compare to our test meter readings. In this case, the maximum measured ZS should not exceed 5.82 ohms. Our actual ZS has been calculated at 3.22 ohms and this is below the maximum permitted value. Therefore, our answer is C. Let's move on to question 7. This time, we must calculate ZS for circuit number 3 and choose the most appropriate answer. We are told, again, that ZE is 0 0.2 ohms. Pause the video and do the calculation. We will need to use table B1 again from guidance note 3. The line and CPC resistance of 2.5-1.5 cable is 19.51 milliohms per metre. The circuit length is 60 metres and this gives us an answer for R1 plus R2 of 1.17 ohms. Add this to ZD of 0.2 ohms and our ZS is 1.37 ohms. Before we can select an answer choice, we need to know what the maximum permitted measured ZS is. Page 62 of the wiring regulations shows a 16 amp type C breaker has a tabulated maximum value of 1.37 ohms. But we have been asked to compare the answer to the maximum measured ZS. To do this, we must multiply 1.37 ohms by 0 0.8 and we have 1.09 ohms. The maximum measured permitted ZS is 1.09 ohms and our actual calculated ZS is 1.37 ohms. This is greater than the permitted and is therefore not acceptable. Our answer choice must be D, 1.37 ohms and above the maximum permitted measured ZS. Finally, question 8. The question is, what is the maximum length of cable for circuit number 3 to not exceed the maximum permissible voltage drop of 11.5 volts? And we are told to take IB as 13 amps. Pause the video, attempt the question. Shown here at the top is the standard formula for voltage drop or VD. But we want the maximum length or L. We must therefore transpose the formula. If we jiggle the formula around, we end up with the lower formula. Now, it is just a case of putting the numbers into the calculator. The maximum permitted voltage drop, or max VD, is given at 11.5 volts. 1000 is the number to convert millivolts into volts. 18 is the millivolts per amp per meter number for 2.5 millimeter conductors which is found on page 409 of the regs. And we've been told to use 13 amps as IB. Calculate these through and our answer is 49.14 metres. We can round this to 49 metres and choose answer D. Well, there we are. We hope that you enjoyed these assessment practice questions. Please do attempt each question and do revisit the questions and solve them again. Everything is practice and this all helps for the assessments. Different exam bodies will have slightly different question styles, but understanding one style will always help with another. The description to this video contains links to other Learning Metrics videos that will further help your knowledge and understanding. Good luck and keep learning. There is more to follow. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. 
Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar, search learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website as shown will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through the list of all the available items and videos. To do this, Click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, 3, 4 and so on. They will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.